In this video, I'll be setting up WireGuard on a Synology NAS running DSM-7. WireGuard is not a built-in package available through the Package Center, so in order to install it, I'll compile a SPK file or Synology package file that I'll manually install on my Synology NAS using Andreas Runfalk's Synology WireGuard repository published on GitHub, which I'll link in the description below. This setup is pretty complex, and it took me a while to get everything working, but I ran through the setup successfully a few times, and I'm confident that the information presented in this video, along with the notes I'll provide in the description below, will get you successful results as well. I'll do my best to provide as much detail along the way, so if you make it through to the end, you'll have a functioning WireGuard VPN running on your Synology NAS. That's the hope anyway. Let's get started. Before getting into the setup of WireGuard, I want to briefly discuss what it is. WireGuard is a fast, modern, and secure VPN solution that's designed for ease of use and high-speed performance. Its aim is to replace older VPN options like IPsec and OpenVPN by providing a leaner and more performant option. WireGuard runs on many platforms including Windows, macOS, iOS, and Android. I'll leave a link to WireGuard's webpage in the description below if you would like to read up further and learn more about WireGuard. As a preliminary step before getting into setting up WireGuard, I'd like to set up DDNS and port forwarding. I covered both topics in my video on remotely accessing your Synology NAS running DSM-7 with DDNS and port forwarding where I cover each topic extensively and if you'd like to view that video, I'll link to it in the card above and in the description below as well. For DDNS, the goal is to set up a domain name that remains consistent as the IP address assigned by your ISP changes. This is all set up from the control panel in DSM-7 under external access then DDNS. I'll be using Synology as the DDNS provider and enter in a host name I'd like to use. I'll test the connection and click OK to finalize everything. For port forwarding, my router doesn't support UPnP, so I needed to manually forward ports on the router itself. Here is a screenshot of the port forwarding rule for WireGuard, where I'll be forwarding port 51820 to the corresponding port on my virtual DSM-7 VM that will be running WireGuard. To get started with the WireGuard setup, I'm here on RunFalk's Synology WireGuard README page on GitHub, which I've linked in the description below. And the first thing we'll need to do is either download or compile a Synology SPK package file specifically for our NASA's platform and DSM version. There are SPK files available for DSM 6.2 and earlier, but being that I'm installing on DSM 7, I'll need to compile a SPK file using the compiling instructions listed here. I first tried compiling directly on my DS920 Plus by installing Docker and Git server from the package center, then enabling and connecting to the NAS through SSH. Everything ran smoothly except for the last step in the process where I got an error which I never was able to figure out. If you know what I could or should do to get past this error, let me know in the comments below. Ultimately, I was able to successfully compile and generate an SPK file. Docker and Git are packages that run on almost all platforms, and I already had an Ubuntu 2004 virtual machine with both packages installed, so I ran through the compile process on that VM and it worked perfectly. Setting up an Ubuntu 2004 VM with Docker and Git is beyond the scope of this video, but I'll run through the steps that I took to compile the SPK file for your reference in the next section. You should be able to run through these same steps on any system that has both Docker and Git installed and build the SPK file you need specifically for your platform and DSM version. Here I'm connected to my Ubuntu VM through SSH. I'll start off by cloning the Synology WireGuard Git repository, then CD into its directory. 
in that I'd like to build the package for DSM-7, I need to fetch the DSM-7 branch, then switch to the branch with the git checkout command. Next, I'll build a Docker image and tag it with the name Cinobuild. I'll then need to create an artifacts directory for the command I run next to complete successfully. Finally, here is the command to build the SPK file using Docker and the Cinobuild image created earlier. I'd like to point out that you will need to adjust this entry here depending on your platform and architecture. In this example, I'm building a package for KVM x64, which is the architecture for virtual DSM. If I'd like to build a SPK file for my DS920 Plus hardware specifically, I'd need to visit Synology's webpage listing the kind of CPU each NAS has, find the DS920 Plus, and change this entry to Gemini Lake before running the command. I'll leave a link to Synology's knowledge base article that will help you figure out what your system's architecture is in the description below. You can also adjust the DSM version you are building the package for by adjusting this entry here. I'll run the command and wait a few minutes for it to complete. If all works out, I'll have an SPK file in the artifacts folder that I can use to install WireGuard using the package manager in virtual DSM-7. At this point, I have a SPK file that I can use to install WireGuard on virtual DSM 7.0. And if you would like to install WireGuard on virtual DSM 7.0 as well, I'll leave a link to the SPK file that I just built in the description below for you to download and use, particularly if you ran into any issues with building the file yourself in the previous step. If you don't have virtual DSM 7.0 installed on your Synology NAS, but your model supports Virtual Machine Manager, check out my video on installing DSM 7.0 Release Candidate as a VM, which you'll see pop up as a card above, and I'll also link in the description below. In the video, I walk through the steps of downloading and installing Virtual DSM 7.0 Release Candidate, but if you go through the steps today, you'll download the current version of Virtual DSM 7.0, which will work perfectly fine with the SPK file that I've included for you to download. We should now be all set to install the WireGuard package on Virtual DSM 7.0. I'll bring up Package Center, click on Manual Install, browse for the WireGuard SPK file that I downloaded to my local system, then select Upload. I'll click Next, then agree to the warning about installing third-party developer packages. I'll uncheck the Run After Installation box, then click Done to complete the installation of WireGuard. Now, we can see that the WireGuard package is installed. Next, we'll need to SSH into the Virtual DSM 7.0 system to continue with the remainder of the setup. I'll go to Control Panel, Terminal, and SNMP, and enable the SSH service. I won't be leaving SSH running, so I won't adjust my setup for additional security, but if you plan to leave your SSH running, consider configuring SSH with added security by running through the steps I cover in my Configure and Manage a Synology NAS with SSH video, which you'll see pop up in the card above, and which I'll also link in the description below. I'll click on Apply and OK on this warning screen to continue. Now I'll SSH into my virtual DSM 7.0 install and run this command to start up the WireGuard service. We get a confirmation that WireGuard successfully started and if we click on WireGuard in the package center, we see that it is currently running as well. Next, I'll start configuring the server end of the VPN connection by first switching to the root user, then creating the Etsy WireGuard directory and cd into the directory. I'll create the public and private keys for the server by issuing these sets of commands, then create and edit the wg0conf file and paste in the setup that worked for me. I'll save the changes then cat the private key of the server so I can copy it and add it to the configuration file.
I'll then save the changes once again, and now the server end of the setup is just about set. Note that I'm not blurring the keys here in the video because I'll be deleting this installation of Virtual DSM 7.0 before I upload the video. For this video, I'll be configuring my MacBook as a WireGuard client, and I've already installed and launched the WireGuard app, which I installed from the App Store. I'll click on the WireGuard icon from the menu bar and select Manage Tunnels to bring up the Manage WireGuard Tunnels window. I'll click on the plus sign here at the bottom of the window and add an empty tunnel to get started. Here, I'll name the tunnel and enter in the settings that are needed to establish a connection with the server. I'll first add an address entry using the IP address that was entered in for the peer in the server config. Then, under the peer section, I'll enter in the public key of the server. An allowed IPs line, which can either be the LAN subnet for a split tunnel setup, as I'm entering in here, or 0.0.0.0/0 for full tunneling through the WireGuard VPN connection. Lastly, an endpoint line needs to be added, where I'm using the DDNS name I've set up and port number accessible through my router to the WireGuard server. That is all that's needed, so I'll save the tunnel. Now, on the server end, I'll need to update the configuration and add the public key of the Mac client, which I'll copy from the WireGuard tunnel window and paste into the public key line in the peer section of the setup. I'll save the changes, and now we can start up the WireGuard service with the wg quick up command. If there aren't any errors, the service should be running. We can also check on the status of the WireGuard service with the wg show command. Lastly, I'll run the wg auto start enable command to enable WireGuard to run at startup. At this point, everything should be set up, and I'll test to make sure by connecting my MacBook to my iPhone hotspot and activate the WireGuard connection. Once the tunnel is established, I'm able to connect to my virtual DSM 7.0 web interface as well as SSH into the system and view the stats on the WireGuard connection with the WG show command. Setting up WireGuard on a Synology NAS using the method described in this video took a lot of steps and, for your reference, I've added the commands and configuration files presented in the video in the description below along with some additional notes that you may find helpful. Hopefully you've got WireGuard up and running at this point and, if you do, make sure to like this video and let me know what Synology NAS you have WireGuard running on in the comments below. Lastly, consider subscribing if you like the content provided from this channel. Thanks so much for watching.